did the dark matter hypothesis just fall apart? No. What's up, you scholars of enlightenment? I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and that you're enjoying a productive and prosperous new year. This week, a preprint revived a long disfavoured argument that suggests that dark matter may not exist at all. This is an issue that occasionally flares up in physics, the issue of dark matter versus mond, at the beautiful intersection of cosmology and particle physics. SciTech Daily fanned the flames this week with a highly controversial piece suggesting that a niche gravitational theory known as mond or modified Newtonian dynamics had become the leading explanation for dark matter and measurements of galactic rotation. This was not well received by experts in the field. SciTech Daily later rode back to another frankly awful headline, but the modified gravity horse had bolted. So what was going on here? In Newton's and Einstein's theories, the gravitational attraction of a massive object drops in proportion to the square of the distance away from it, the infamous inverse square law. This means that stars orbiting around a galaxy should feel less gravitational pull and therefore orbit more slowly the further they are from the galactic centre. That's just what happens in our solar system. The planets orbit the sun with decreasing speed the further away from the centre you go, just as the law of gravitation predicts. However, when we observe galaxies, the velocities of stars do drop as predicted by the inverse square law in the inner galaxy. But instead of continuing to drop as we move further away from the centre of the galaxy, the velocities level off beyond a certain point. This flattening of galaxy rotation speeds was discovered by the astronomer Vera Rubin in the 1970s. Physicists rushed to explain this intriguing behaviour and two solutions immediately sprung to mind. Either there was some type of unseen mass that was making up the deficit, or we needed to modify the laws of gravity, as we had done when we leapt from Newton to Einstein. Most physicists now accept the hypothesis that there must be huge clouds of additional matter which surround galaxies and give an extra gravitational acceleration to their outlying stars. But these clouds do not emit any light themselves. They're huge, dark matter halos. The rotational curves of galaxies are often presented as the proof that dark matter exists. Indeed, here is a young physicist, a Dr. Sam Gregson, presenting the galactic rotational curve observation and dark matter hypothesis as figure one in his PhD thesis. However, critics point to a couple of minor issues with the dark matter hypothesis. Dark matter is hypothesized to be stable and to have five times the mass of all the visible matter in the universe. So surely it should be all around us. And yet we haven't observed it. Searches for dark matter particles have proliferated with hypothetical weakly interacting massive particles or WIMPs and lighter weight axions serving as prime candidates. But so far, dark matter search experiments by thousands of physicists at experiments such as Xenon at Gran Sasso in Italy or the LZ experiment at Sanford in the US have all come up empty. If dark matter is really so abundant, some argue that we'd have expect to have seen it already. This is a real embarrassment for physicists and suggests we don't know much about huge constituents of our own universe. The dark matter hypothesis also assumes that scientists know how matter in the sky ought to move in the first place. But what if our understanding of gravity isn't quite right? In the 1970s and 80s, some researchers, including Israeli physicist Mordechai Milgram, took this alternate tack. They attempted to tweak gravity. Many early attempts at tweaking gravity were easy to rule out, but Milgram found a winning formula for explaining the rotational curves of galaxies. Milgram hypothesized that when the gravitational acceleration felt by a star drops below a certain level, Precisely 0.000000012 meters per second, or 100 billion times weaker than that which we feel at the surface of the Earth, 
gravity somehow switches from an inverse square law to something close to an inverse distance law. Above this scale, everything is normal and Newtonian. But below this scale, things get strange. Modified Newtonian dynamics, or MOND, essentially makes an ad hoc tweak to the famous inverse square law of gravity in order to explain some of the phenomena attributed to dark matter, such as the rotational curves of galaxies. Under this hypothesis, no missing matter is needed to explain the errant motions of the heavenly bodies. Rather, on cosmic scales, gravity itself works in a different way than either Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein predicted. Gravity has a small remnant pull regardless of distance. This remnant is only about 10 trillionths of a G, but it's enough to explain galactic rotation curves. So saying that modified gravity explains dark matter when really modified gravity would replace dark matter in explaining some of our observations is incredibly awkward wording from SciTech Daily and frankly inaccurate. However, the fact that Milgram's ugly fix works at all has long puzzled physicists. Milgram's hypothesis does not really specify how you get from one regime of gravity to the other. And while theoretical physicists like Eric Valinda have tried to bridge the gap, the dark matter hypothesis has remained the accepted explanation for the rotational behaviour of galaxies. So why the consternation last week if there's really nothing new to see? Well, because SciTech Daily oversold things. Their article seemed to suggest that the new preprint by theoretical astrophysicist Ki Hun Chai of Sejong University of Seoul, South Korea, had blown a huge hole in the hypothesized existence of dark matter. In the preprint, Chai looked at the high resolution velocity curves of 152 galaxies, as observed in the Spitzer Photometry and Accurate Rotation Curves database, or SPARC and found that the predictions of a modified gravity theory known as AQUAL were a better fit to the rotational curves of some galaxies than the standard dark matter cosmological models. Now this result is intriguing and it started a lot of debate in the field, but it certainly doesn't overturn the dark matter hypothesis. And in fairness, the author doesn't seem to claim that it does, but a story had to be spun. You see the rub is, a physical theory has to be consistent with the full suite of astronomical observations we have at our disposal. And modified gravity simply is not. Modified gravity cannot successfully predict the large-scale structure of the universe, the microwave background, the abundances of light elements, or the bending of starlight by gravitational lensing in the way that a universe full of dark matter can. These are some of the most basic and important predictions that come out of physical cosmology, and they all require and point to the existence of dark matter. I won't go into full details about all the issues that modified gravity has here. There's an excellent article by Ethan Siegel, which I will link in the description, but I will cover one, gravitational lensing. Although astronomers cannot see dark matter, they can detect its influence by observing how the gravity of massive galaxy clusters, which contain dark matter, bend, distort, and magnify the light of more distant galaxies located behind the cluster. This phenomenon is called gravitational lensing. Telescopes like Hubble allow astronomers to map the distribution of dark matter in space using gravitational lensing. Large galaxy clusters contain both dark matter and normal light emitting matter. By observing the areas around massive clusters of galaxies, astronomers can identify warped background galaxies, and they can then reverse engineer those distortions to reveal where the densest concentrations of matter must lie in the foreground galaxy cluster lens. Mathematical models of these results shed light on the location and properties of the lensing material, both visible and invisible, or dark matter. They reveal that the universe appears to have about five times more dark matter than regular matter, and seems to be organized around an immense network of dark matter filaments 
that have grown over time. At the intersections of these filaments, massive visible structures like galaxy clusters are found. So Mond does have an arena where it can claim victory over dark matter. It explains the rotational curves of galaxies better than dark matter ever has, including all the way up to the present day. But zeroing in on the messiness of individual galaxies, relatively small scale structures in the cosmological sense, and ignoring the apparent structure of the universe on the grandest of scales, seems to be amplifying noise over signal. Until the day comes that modified gravity can explain the apparent structure of the universe and many of our other observations within it with greater clarity across a whole host of regimes, dark matter will deservedly be the leading theory of what makes up the majority of the mass in our universe. And that's not because it's a neat fudge that the cosmological community believes in, but because our observations and models demand dark matter. So the hype this week does seem to have been just that. It's a moment in the sun for a true underdog hypothesis. But it certainly got some outlier scientists screaming, vive le monde. I want to know what you think, because you're the scholars of enlightenment that I do this for. So please take a moment, if you wish, to let me know down in the comment section. And if you like this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, setting up notifications, and sharing this video more widely. I can't tell you how much these simple actions help me out and how much I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being scientific. Thanks for being bad.